What's up guys, Scotty2Hockey here, aka The Average Hockey Fan, and today let's discuss Montreal Canadiens top 5 prospects coming into the 2018, coming into the 2019-2020 season, excuse me, the top 5 prospects in my mind, this isn't the order, everybody has them in, everybody has their own idea on prospects, how valuable they are, what positions they're at, and uh, what they can possibly do for the team, how they project down the road, these are the order I had them in and how important I think they are to the team. I don't consider Jesperi Cockney any a prospect. I've heard a few people say he's still a prospect. He's played a full season with the Montreal Canadiens. He's a member of the Montreal Canadiens. He is no longer a prospect, so that's why he's not on this list. This is for the fans that are saying they still consider him a prospect, which in your mind is totally cool with me, but to me he is not a prospect. Uh, my number one prospect for the Habs right now, and I'm basing a lot of this, a lot of this why I'm putting him up as number one, is what he's doing in the OHL playoffs right now, and how hot he's looked, and how good of a leader he is in the OHL, and how big he is in pressure games. They were down 3 to nothing to the London Knights, this dude totally quarterbacked him to a four game winning streak, and they ended up beating London. Uh, four to three in the series, and now they're playing Saga. Now they're down two to one, but I'm sure with Suzuki on the team and guys like uh, Ratcliffe and Schnarr, they can come back. But number one is Nick Suzuki, a highly skilled offensive-minded center who has consistently put up great totals at the OHL and junior level and has really found his game in this year's OHL playoffs, leading his team to two series wins, his hockey IQ, slick passing, and ability to score and, co and quarterback a power play makes him a valuable prospect. He just needs to work on his skating and strength a little bit. That's what I had written down for him. And his overall, he has over 20 points in 14 games in the OHL playoffs so far this season. Guelph is currently down 2-1 to one to Saginaw. He plays for a Guelph Storm. They're currently down 2-1. to one. Um, In 2018, 2019... Between Guelph and Owen Sound Attack, he had 59 games played, 34 goals, 60 assists, 94 points. He had 100 the season prior to that. And in the World Juniors this year on Team Canada, in five games played, he had zero goals, three assists, five points. He's 19 years old. He's 5'11". His height is 183 pounds. And I see him down the road being a top six winger. I don't think Suzuki's going to be a center in the NHL. I love the guy, but I just don't think he has the defensive capabilities to play center in the NHL. But at the wing, I think he would thrive. And I think eventually he will be top six in Montreal. He may make the team next year. I'm putting my money on it that he's going to make the team next year. And I could see him being third or fourth line. And within a year, maybe even halfway through next year or a year or two, he should be top six in Montreal. And I see this guy thriving maybe as a second line winger, possibly as a first line winger. So he's a very valuable prospect. And a guy who I have written down as number two, debuted in Montreal the last game of the season, Ryan Paling. He had a hat trick. He had pretty good solid totals in the NCAA after a bit of an inconsistent rookie season in the NCAA. He's been nothing but a mainstay since then. And his first game in Montreal was miraculous. If he could keep even close to that pace, he's going to be a superstar NHL player. And uh, his World Junior Tournament, he was the MVP, and he really, really stood out for Team USA. And in a game where they were almost eliminated, I believe he scored a hat-trick, and he was huge in that game. But as for Ryan Paling, I had written down, he's a solid defensive center who year by year is an aggressive four-checker who plays a relentless, no-quit physical game and goes 100% at the college level. After struggling in his rookie season in the NCAA a bit, he found his game and has been better year after year. This year, his offensive ability has really shown through. With a World Junior, with world junior MVP status, a scoring a hat-trick in his first NHL game, to me, he projects as a number two center down the road uh, behind KK. He reminds me of Philip No with a higher offensive upside. He's 20 years old, his height is 6'2", his weight is 183 pounds, in the NHL, in one game played, the last game of the season this year for the Habs, he had three goals, three points, uh, plus three, one hit, and played 11 minutes and 22 seconds in that game. And for St. Cloud this year in the NCAA, St. Cloud University, in 36 games played, he had eight goals, 23 assists, 31 points, was a plus 12. And in the World Junior Championships, where he went down to MVP, uh, win the MVP despite his team not winning the gold, he had seven games played, five goals, three assists, eight points, a plus five, was the MVP of the tournament, over a point a game, World Junior MVP, playing against the best young players and prospects out there. So Paling, I project, I think he is going to be an NHL center. I think down the road, maybe two or three years, possibly even sooner, he's going to be the number two center, mainstay, had, main mainstay number two center for the Montreal. Canadians just behind his very cocky Amy. And I'm sorry if I butchered that one a bit, guys. My writing's a bit scratchy on the paling one. I, I kind of rushed through it. 
And my third guy I have on my list as top five prospects is Caden Primu. And this guy possibly is higher on other people's lists. I've seen lists where people have him written down as the number one prospect. But it's not at a position we're in dire need of. Yes, the Habs could use a good backup goalie, but I don't think Primu is going to be the backup goalie next year. And uh, we, we more so need a D or a good center or somebody who can pop into our top six and help our power play. I think down the road, Caden Primu is going to be more and more valuable year after year, especially with Carey Price getting older as time goes on. But right now, I got him at number three, and there's a good, good argument. I totally agree with people having him number one on their list, but for me, he's number three on my list. And Caden Primu, I had written down an extremely solid and highly touted young goalie prospect who Montreal stole at the 199th overall pick in the 2017 NHL draft in the seventh round. He won the Mike Richter Award as the top goalie in NCAA Division I hockey. Um, he, he helped lead USA to the gold medal game despite only winning silver. And he was solid the whole tournament for USA. And he recently got invited to the World Hockey Championships for Team USA. He's 19 years old. He's a big body at 6'3". His weight's 200 pounds for Northeastern University this year in the NCAA. In 36 games played, he was 25-10-1. He had a .933 save percentage, a 2.09 goals against, and in the World Junior Tournament this year, he had five games played, four 1-0 record, .936 save percentage, and 1.61. So Caden Premium is by far my number three guy, but I totally agree if people have him higher on the list. There's really, really good argument for that. He is awesome. And my fourth guy, number four, may surprise somebody. There's one or two guys who I left off this list that other people would have in their top five, but these are my top four personally, is Josh Brooks. He's a very creative and offensively gifted defender who at times has shown the potential to be a great top four D-man in the NHL, but struggles with consistency. And although he has become much more defensively sound the past year, he still has some hole in his games. But a few months or a year in Laval, he should develop into a guy who can play in the big club. Drafted second round, 56th overall. In 2018-2019, in seven games played for Laval, so when he left when he left the WHL, he went to Laval. In seven games played, he had zero goals, one assist, one point, and was a minus two. But those are his first seven games playing professional hockey, so you can't really judge him on that. And 2018-2019, for the Moose Jaw Warriors, uh, he had 59 games played, 16 goals, 59 assists, 75 points, plus 24. So well over a point a game player in the WHL. Uh, go-to defenseman, and he was a plus 24, and he can be physical when he's needed to. He, there is some holes in his game. He does make some bad turnovers, but I see him two or three years down the road definitely being top four in Montreal. I'm not 100% sure if he's going to make the team next year, especially with keeping Christian Folden around, and the whole may have to bring Romanov thing over, because in 2021, there's a pending lockout. If you don't bring Romanov over this year, you may miss the chance to bring him over at all, and he may resign the KHL, so we'll see what MB is going to do there. And in the 2018-2019 in World Junior Championships, he had zero goals, two assists, two points, and was a plus seven. He shoots right, which Montreal really doesn't need right now. They're not in desperate need of right-handed shots. We're kind of overstacked with that in the lineup, actually. Uh, he's 19 years old. He's six foot one and 192 pounds, so he's not small, and he's still got growth to go. And my number five guy, the main reason why I had this guy written as the number five guy, in the KHO, he didn't thrive by no means, but in the World Junior, playing with the top young players, the top young prospects, he really showed what kind of player he is. And before the World Junior Tournament, I did not have this guy in my top five. I didn't even have him in my top seven. But after the World Junior Tournament, and I seen what he was really capable of, and hearing how highly Habs fans and Habs ma management and media in general talk about this guy, I had to have him in my top five. And that's Alexander Romanov. I had written down an offensive-minded D-man with a great shot and a really good skating ability. He doesn't wind up or forecast his shot, so it's hard for goalies and defenders to stop or block it as quickly as they would when they see it coming. For a smaller D-man, he is reliable defensively, but his offensive upside outshines his defensive ability. I like his decision-making and poise on the ice for a young D-man of his age. I honestly think he could play in Montreal this year, and with him being unsigned and a pending lockout in 2021, in, in uh, Montreal GM may go out and try and sign him and bring him over for this year, maybe even to play in Montreal this year. At 19 years old, he's 5'11", 185 pounds, so he's kind of undersized for a defender. He shoots left, which is a desperate need in Montreal. He's drafted uh, second round, number 38, which is pretty good for a young defender like that, pretty high up there. This year in the KHL, he was underwhelming, but it's his first year playing with the, the big guys, the men, 
In 2018, 2019, in 43 games played, one goal, three assists, four points, but was a plus 16 and was really re reliable defensively. Was really reliable defensively, excuse me, guys. And a lot of people um, really, really highly tout this prospect. All the scouting reports I read on him, all the things about fans, even Russian KHL fans, they all love this kid. They all think he's a super future star. He's a future superstar, excuse me. Um, butchering the Romanoff one, but he's a future superstar for sure. And the World Juniors this year, he showed why. Seven games played, one goal, seven assists, eight points, plus 12. And he won the bronze medal, but Russia, he could have led Russia to the gold medal. They were pretty close to getting to the gold medal game. Unfortunately, it ended up being a bronze for Romanov. But if they had to go to the gold medal game and Russia had to win the gold medal, it could have been Romanov and not Paling winning the gold medal. But thankfully, one of the Montreal prospects won the uh, World Junior MVP. Excuse me, none of them won the gold medal, but Paling won the World Junior MVP. Now, if I kind of butchered this one a bit, guys, I'm sorry. A lot of this for me was hard to read because I had written down long paragraphs of what I've thought of each player. My writing is a bit scratchy. It wasn't rushed by no means. I took my time researching these players, seeing who I thought fell into the top five, in my opinion. And I have two honorable mentions who I'm going to do videos about because they don't get talked about enough as Montreal prospects. And that's Jesse Le Yellowin. And I, I cannot pronounce that guy's name. Sorry, guys. Yet Jesse Yellenin and Kale Fleury. So those are two guys I'm going to do videos on besides. They didn't fall into my top five, but they're just outside number six and number seven in my opinion. And I feel they don't get talked about enough and they deserve individual videos. So my top five draft, my top five prospects for the Montreal Canadiens. And now that I am done the video, I have number one, Nick Suzuki. I have number two, Ryan Paling. I have number three, Caden Premu. I have number four, Josh Brooks. I have number five, Alexander Romanov. And as my honorable mentions, at number six, I have Jesse Yellowin. And at number seven, I have Kale Fleury. And I will do individual videos on those guys. Anyways, guys, feel free to comment if you agree or disagree. Let me know what you think about Romanov. Do you think he should come over to Montreal this year? Especially with those low standard KHL numbers. But he was a plus 16, and he has been reliable defensively. And he was excellent in the World Junior Tournament. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think Nick Suzuki may play in Montreal this year? Anyways, guys, like, subscribe, ring the bell for my upcoming videos, and feel free to let me know what you think of this video and what you think of these prospects, who your top five are, and do my top five fall into your top five. This is Scotty Tuhaki, a.k.a. the Average Hockey Fan, over and out. Enjoy your day, folks.